What's up, everybody? Yep, it's that time of the week again, bitch. Welcome back to another sexy episode of Old School, New School Comedy Podcast. And I am your host, Christy Miller. And with me this week is a really dear friend of mine. I met her when I first moved here in 2005 from Los Angeles to New York. And I met her at Gold's Gym that used to be here that's gone because, you know, what we can't have anything nice. Um, we're going on a little different uh, comedic outlook this week. You know, we always talk shop here on Old School, New School Comedy. And she is a best-selling author and a relationship expert based here in New York City. You can go on her website, susanwinter.net, get, download all her books, order them order merch, get advice, hire her. She's amazing. Um, so I thought it would be fun to have her on the show this week to talk about comics and dating and how fucked up we are. So I would like to introduce to you Miss Susan Winter. Thank you, Christy. Hi, everyone. <laughs> uh, dating is crazy. You don't have to be a comic to have a weird dating story. Yeah, but uh, comics are weird, so. <laughs> I've never dated one. So have you dated a comic? Uh, I refuse to because I am <laughs> one. <laughs> Okay, so, and, uh, <laughs> so what is it about comics that makes them crazy? Well, it's we, we're wired different. Okay, you know, comics we we see the world differently. That's why we're able to talk about it on stage yeah. and comment and, and and elaborate on crazy whether it's news stories or current events or pop culture or relationships or you know family life. You know, people come to us and like, yeah, I totally relate to that. And that's how we express ourselves. Yeah. But offstage, we're all fucked up, introverted, we're messed up. Half of us are drug addicts, alcoholics. I'm straight edge, so yeah. my drug of choice is the iron in the gym. Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> that's where I take out all my aggression. But, you know, we're all emotionally fucked up. And that's why we're all sad clowns, is what I like to say. Oh, okay. And, you know, we, we don't know how to, we're all wounded. And so, you know, going on stage, we're able to express ourselves in a sense of we're, we're very vulnerable but yet we're not we're very invincible it's like our superpower to deal with emotions on stage because yeah. that's your stage persona for, so to speak so whatever your point of view is however you talk about things you know i i'm a ranter and a roaster and a self-deprecator and i just like to make fun of shit that's happening no, it doesn't matter what it is i'm not a political comic i don't care about that stuff um, I do care about that stuff, but not like that. And um, but it's more of um, I like to have fun. You know, I'm a woman in my 50s, so I like to have fun and enjoy life and see people laugh. So if we can poke fun at ourselves or other people, yeah. throw people under the bus, throw myself under the bus. Hey, let's go because it's, we're only on this planet for a minute. So if we can just like the old days, break balls, have fun, roast yeah. your pals, yeah, yeah. and you yeah. laugh and you laugh hard and you just let go of a lot of shit and that's for me what i love but yeah i have very failed relationships well i i, I love that <laughs> comics you know normally a big section of their presentation will be about dating and relationships yeah. because we all find it funny it is so strange out there now the things that people do that now have become normalized like ghosting is now considered normal it, it's not normal you know, 20 years ago, you'd think somebody was dead or in the hospital. Yeah. But I mean, now it's just a way to like, oh, I don't want to have that conversation. It's very uncomfortable for me. So I'm just not going to have it. And people ghosting you after you've been in a four year relationship yeah. or a year relationship. Yeah. And that's the way they end the, the, the they, they, they break up. I oh. mean, there's so many weird breakup stories these days. And it, it's just so. You know, you can't even make that stuff up. No, you can't. Like, like I, I'm, I'm sure it existed, but it was different back when we were kids because yeah. we didn't have all this technology. Nobody had cell phones. You know, if you called someone's house and left, you know, left a message on their answering machine. Yeah, right. right Hello, right. people. Yeah. Is this thing on? Do we have electricity today? You know, it's one of those things. And if someone didn't answer, you just went about your day. But now it's like, and if you're like, oh, someone called, you don't even worry about your messages until you got home. Now we're like glued to our phones going, please, yeah, I yeah. got to call this person back in 0.3 seconds. Or I'm, what are you doing? Like, we're crazy now. And then when people ghost, it's like, dude, your phone is in your hand and you're staring at it all day. You can't text back. <laughs> my, my friend did this. 
she she was um, the behavioral scientist and she had a picture of this lady with like a big bowl of fruit on her head you know uh -huh. one of these workers or something migrant right. workers that on the phone she goes if she can text back you can do it <laughs> <laughs> hold on <laughs> yeah, it takes three seconds to send a text yeah but the question is that you know technology is so interesting oh my god dating apps oh god don't even get me started on those horrifying things well those should be banned. Oh, well, Fuck TikTok, ban Tinder, Grinder, all that, whatever data, whatever they call them now. Okay, so this you'll like. Okay, I love. Okay, so Bumble understands that people are uncomfortable, especially Gen Z, like to look at somebody in the face and talk to them and yeah. communicate because they've been doing this their whole life. Yeah. So they have developed AI. The AI that they have is also very good because it is able to tell if the face that you think you're talking to is real or not, or if they're a scammer. Catfisher? Yeah, catfisher, scammer. Right. And uh, we're gonna be having a lot more of that later. But um, so they're doing AI technology to keep their you know, members safe, but they also have an AI concierge. Now this concierge you talk to, kind of like a therapist, and they go date for you. They date the concierge AIs of the other people who are too afraid to talk to you. So. They go out into the field, look around and do the vetting for you so you don't have to do the discomfort of actually getting to know somebody yourself. And then they come back like a recon mission and tell you, I think Todd is okay. The two of us AIs dated together and we think we're okay. And we think you might be a match and you can move forward. <laughs> Whatever happened to growing a set of fucking balls and saying, how you going? You want to hang out? No, forget about it. Get the fuck out of my face, you know? Like, I miss the days when <laughs> when dudes would hit on you and yeah. you're like, no, thank you. Oh, fuck you, you lesbian. Really? Now I'm a lesbian? Now I'm just AI. Like, yeah. now I'm a... What, what is happening? Like, AI dates? This is creepy, dude. I, this is... So you never have to leave your house. Your AI personality could just go live it its great? life. They can go... Yeah, they can go do it for you. Kind of gets rid of the mess and the you know discomfort of having to talk to somebody or chat them up. So they do the vetting, which like is a safety precaution. But I just I, I get a kick out of the idea of two AIs dating each other and then coming back and saying, "Yeah, what? Sheila was really cool." I mean, it just doesn't or seem. What if the two AIs hit it off and tell oh. you to go fuck yourself? <laughs> I'm fucking this guy. Fuck you, bitch, and your real <laughs> vagina and your fucking you know your human flesh. I'm gonna go bang Brad now. That could happen. Like that could happen. The robots will take over. Well, because it's a learning model, it could do that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you get dumped by your own AI. That's hilarious. That's that's genius. Now I want to sign up because I want to fuck with people and dump them <laughs> on AI. My AI guy says you're no good. Really? A robot that does it? Oh, okay. But the robots start fucking, and then you're at home doing that, waiting for the waiting for them to come back from the vetting process. Yeah. He's not back yet. He's still banging the AI guy. The AIs are yeah. totally going at it. They run away together. They log off. That's it. Yeah. They go rogue, right? <laughs> what is wrong with this is why we can't have nice things. <laughs> I'm telling you, we're, we're, we, we're humans. We need human I contact. Know. I know. I, I miss know. the days of going and being social and meeting people. Now it's, they won't, people don't even look at each other in bars or I don't go to bars, but even at gyms, Everybody's so busy filming themselves. Like I oh walk into the gym, God. I have squat shoes, knee sleeves, oh. chalk, and there's these assholes with tripods, lights, re, you know, uh, glam squads, what wardrobe racks. I'm like, what are you doing? Are you working out? Or like, and, and I'm watching them work out. I got, I wouldn't put that online. That is terrifying. You're gonna kill yourself. <laughs> what is wrong? Like. We're so fucked up, we don't know. And these kids, you're right, because they don't know how to have a conversation. Yeah. My friend's niece, she was talking to her, and Karen's like, I was talking to her, my niece, and she's like, I'm afraid to make a phone call. I don't know how to make a phone call. I only know how to text. You know, years ago, I got stuck right. on a plane where there, there were magazines, okay? Because this is before they had entertainment right. for you. Right. And I read a Teen Vogue. Oh God, this was like in the late, not early 2000s. Okay. And they said, if you could only do one thing, would you text or call a person? And they all said text. There's a bear, because you can take your time, you can think of what you want to say, 
you can measure it so it's all in your control but my god have a real conversation where you have to have interaction think respond and you have to have an emotional an organic emotional yep. response instead yep. of contriving and manipulating I mean, we do that on stage as comics because that's our job as a comic is to contrive and manipulate the truth in the sense, not like make it a, a lie or manipulate it, but more of a exaggerate it, yes. make it big right. so it makes it funny. Yeah. You know, we all, we're all about exaggeration. That's, we have to be to make the, make the joke funny, make the story go through and follow through and make it entertaining. Right. So we do that with our words, but I can't, I can't stay, I hate texting. I hate it. I hate it. I hate people that want to have a conversation on it. I'm like, pick up the fucking phone and use your words. Yeah. You know, a, a meaningful conversation. I, I talk for a living. I, I know, but we still, we, we are of a generation where we knew, <laughs> we learned how to talk. Yeah. We learned how to communicate. Yeah. I had a dog walker that wouldn't look me in the eyes for two years. It was like traumatizing. <laughs> for I finally got him to kind of glance my direction. I just, oh my God. You know, this is. <laughs> This Listen. is, these are the people who are going to be handling our insurance policies. Yeah, this is the yeah. person who's going to be pushing me around in a wheelchair <laughs> yeah, on our old phone. Exactly, phone. exactly. Shoot, pushing they won't me around in a wheelchair. Yeah, like with the phone attached. He's on a tripod on the back of my chair looking at himself. TikTok <laughs> so live, here's TikTok my day, live. Here's my day at work with Christy. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh yeah, all right, old lady. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, fall off the thing. I don't oh, give a shit. Is this live? Can I tag you in this video? <laughs> exactly. Get the fuck out of here. I'm like, I, 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 I can't. Like you, I'm sorry. And then the, and, uh, this whole self checkout thing drives me crazy too. What do you mean by self? Oh, you mean in, in, in the line? grocery stores? Like you can't even talk to the fucking people that oh, work there anymore. I know. If you're lucky, the little light starts dinging if you need help. Oh, but... I fuck it up on purpose just to make somebody come over. <laughs> I just start fucking hitting the wrong buttons. Bitch, do your job. <laughs> Listen, why am I doing your job and then I have to fuck you? Then I own the store. I'm 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 scheduling everybody I now. Know. I'm making the hours here. I'm getting a paycheck. I fuck know. this. I I do things on purpose just to fuck with them. And I literally like at Whole Foods, I wait in line and there'll be no I cannot deal with self checkout. I can't. It's just no. I'm paying for this, then I get a discount. Do I get a discount? You know what I mean? Do I yeah. get free shit? Am yeah. I employee of the month because I ring up all my shit correctly? You know right. what I mean? Like, yeah. am I going to get a prize? Yeah. It's, you know, am, am I am I going to get a share in the company? <laughs> you know, what the fuck? I so I wait in the line for the people and I like to talk to the people. I like to make them laugh. I'm a comic. So oh, I like to cool. entertain and make people laugh and, and do that shit. But it's like, no, you will have employee. You will have people force these kids, force your employees to work and look at other people instead of making them stay in the back stocking shelves while you have self-checkout because you want to save money. It's so crazy. I know I just went off on a tangent. I'm very sorry. It had nothing to do with comedy. But <laughs> no, but I mean, in some countries like in Japan, there is a discomfort for a lot of these kids. Okay, to be honest, there is a large percentage of my population of clients that have never had sex. We'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> and they are mostly a conservative Asian culture and yeah. South Asian and sure. sometimes a religious right. uh, sect, but um, they've been pursuing uh, advanced degrees and not, you know, and so there's a lot of conflict around this and there's a lot of discomfort. And imagine being 26, 27, 30 and being thrown out into this world with absolutely no idea as to what the game is, what people are doing with you, and what's okay and what's not okay. So there's a lot of that going on. So sometimes in Japan, it's just easier to have um, a doll created for you that you can be with. Um, Chucky? <laughs> well, well a very smelt and attractive oh, yeah, hot version Chucky. of that. Yeah, I like hot Chucky. <laughs> yeah, because it, it eliminates the fear of rejection it eliminates the conversation what are we doing with society we're so fucking soft like, yeah exactly it's not we're exactly. not preparing our youth yeah. for the real world i try to tell kids it's yeah. a fucked up world out there yeah. and being coddling your children friends of mine that have kids don't worry people i don't have children at least none that i know about <laughs> and <laughs> but it's literally coddling and doing things for them or having the phones babysit them and that's their their outlet of, of, of relationships or socializing and then they go out in the real world and they fold they collapse and they run home and they don't like we're, we're creating 
perpetually like you know like the the longest oldest living children yes. that are incapable of wiping their own ass let alone going to the store and i don't know making a decision yeah. on their own or my, what is happening my friend um she's brilliant but she wanted to make sure that her child is functional in a digital world she took away his cell phone and said figure out how to get home Good She's like, her. where's north? Where's south? How do I get there? How do I get it? That kid has a chance. Oh, he, the kid is like super brilliant because she's made him resilient. Yeah. I mean, he knows how to self-sufficient. Yep. He's resilient. Yep. And if something happens, he knows how to stay clear headed, yep. make a decision mm -hmm. and make a, a, a healthy decision yep. to like uh, with a solution. You know, like that's what we had to do. You know, we were kids. We didn't have this shit. You know, you came home when the street light came like on. Some funny, or you go get out shot. And play, right. Yeah, you just go, go out, out and play. play. And we knock on kids' doors. Hey, can can tell you know Tony come out and play? You know that yeah. was our that was our pickup line. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I went. Now on Epstein Island, this is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if that would work today. <laughs> go knocking on doors. Hey, can yeah. you come out and play? I'm so doing it right now. Let's cut off the show and go take the camera and go yeah, knock let's on go doors. See who's who's available and who's at home. Can Susan come out and play? <laughs> <laughs> I'm your neighbor. I'd like to meet you. Would you play with me? Do you have any kids I can play with? Yes. Yeah. Bow chicken. Wow. 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 Speaking of children, <laughs> what about younger men? Oh, that is my kryptonite. I love. I love younger men. Not even in a negative way. Or uh, I'm hilarious. So, but <laughs> but I love younger men because I'm not your typical 53 year old woman. You're not your typical anything. No, you? I'm a fuck. I'm fucked up, dude. I'm a unicorn. I'm a unicorn with a bent thing, a bent horn, and a fucking cleft hoof, and a limp and shit. I've been through it, honey. You know? Yeah. You know, like, I'm the unicorn that went through Vietnam, you know? Um, but I just live my life, I live my life with a clear heart, you know? I like to have fun. I like to laugh. You know, we're only on this planet for a minute, and we yeah. learned that in 2020, that yeah. life is short. Right, right. And you learn how to not sweat the bullshit and not let st stupid shit c control your emotions and your thoughts and get in there and weigh you down and be angry and sit in this whole, like, you know, wait till they get a load of me and you're the joker and you start killing people. You know, no, I, I learned how to just, like, dumb shit. I'm like, eh, it doesn't even mean anything. So living life, I want people to be happy. I love seeing people smile. Mm -hmm. I love watching the crowd laugh. Mm -hmm. You know, nothing gives makes me happier than being on stage and watching people laugh so hard they cry. Like, well, that's so healing. It's so healing. You, you, and you've actually moved them from the state of wherever they were to a happy place. Yeah. I mean, do you know how powerful that is? I love to take, I always tell people my act is like spa day for your brain. Oh my God, that's brilliant. And you're going into the spa yeah. and all that shit is just being washed yeah. away. You leave it at the door and you just enjoy the experience. Enjoy the laughing, the yeah. massage, the hot ro the hot rocks yeah. on your back or the steam room yeah. or the cold plunge or whatever you're into in your, in your spas, whatever, your facials. It's just a spa day for your brain. So when you leave, you've got, you're going back into the real world yeah. where it's all bullshit and reality. And, but yet you've been laughing so much and there's so many endorphins going and you're so relaxed that you maybe have a clearer head and a better perspective to deal with problems yeah. or shit or everyday life or whatever your issue is. You know, just going to the store and making the girl behind the counter laugh. I know her job sucks. I know people right. treat her like shit yeah. because she wears a name terrible? tag. Isn't but terrible? just yeah. the, the, the gift of making people laugh and that I'm grateful for to like watch her laugh, which I know she's had a shitty day, but just for that moment, yeah, yeah. she laughed and forgot about it for five seconds, right. gave herself a break, yeah. de-stressed. Yeah, yeah. And that's how I, uh, and that's, I just want everyone to live their life out loud. I want whatever you're, whatever makes you happy and it doesn't hurt you, yeah. it doesn't hurt other people, do it. Fuck what everybody else thinks. Live your best fucking life because you're only here for a minute. So let's have a good time. That's beautiful. You know, that's just how I feel. And that's how I live my life. Yeah. And so I'm not your typical 53 year old. Well, so men yeah. my age, they don't know what to think. Well, they me. don't know what to they do. They have with no you. idea what to do with yeah, me. Yeah. I know what to do with them. Slam the door <laughs> in their face because they're all fat and out of shape. And <laughs> they haven't lifted anything. They haven't lifted a weight. You know, it's, it's hilarious how they, oh, you have a bad back. And 
you know, my knee hurts, you know, my doctor said I can't lift over 20 pounds because I had a heart attack in 2012 and I'm on blood. Shut up! You're making my pussy dry. <laughs> what the fuck? You're trying to get in bed? No, you're, no, no. Show me your W-2 before you keep talking, you know? Make it worth my while, you piece of shit. You sound like an invalid, like, oh, I'm going to be helping a patient. That's not a husband, that's a patient. I don't need that shit. I need someone strong, so I like younger men. Yeah, well, women, women are so much more vibrant now. I mean, we've really come into our own. And, and it's interesting because younger men, well, just so your audience knows, the only reason I'm in here and in this profession is because I wrote an international best-selling book called Older Women, Younger Men. It's not in print anymore. That's cool. That's actually very good. It means hopefully it's not necessary to have this conversation to validate that it's okay. But there's still generations coming below us that we have to educate. Yeah. So you probably have yeah. to get that and reprint it. Uh, um, so at, at any rate, you know, younger generations can, they're the, the product of evolution. So whatever, if you're evolved and you're advanced and you are not typical of your age group, which you're not, and you live a different kind of life, somebody younger will totally get you. Totally yeah. get you. I like guys that are around 40. Okay. Like 38, 39, well, You said 40. young. I was thinking like 20, 21. Oh, well, That's there what was, I was a 27-year-old that was chasing me, uh, but he's too... But these kids are too flaky. Yeah. They send you a text and then they don't respond. I'm like, dude, dude, I'm just trying to get laid. I know. You're, I know. you're 12. You know, like, like, you know, this is a this is a fucking hate crime if I have sex with you. I'm 53, you're uh, 27. Uh, you know, yeah. let's just do this. And he can't even follow through. I'm like, dude, you never get laid. <laughs> like, you're doomed, dude. You're going to have to hire a prostitute. <sighs> and even then, you probably won't even send the Venmo to her yeah. because you can't follow through with anything. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> but it's like, but I like guys in their late 30s okay. to 40s, you know. But that's not so different from your age. That's no. just a generation. Yeah. Right? That's yeah. cool. So that makes more sense because they would get you. They would yeah. understand you. Don't, if you're, you know... There's so many people that are living inside a life that is not fitting into the outside world. Oh my God, it's so bad. They, they I, and, uh, and you probably have had clients talk to you about this, or you've noticed this with your clients. When I go on the road, um, there's always, not always, I shouldn't say that, let me rephrase that. When I go on the road, every now and then, it's only happened in the last few years once. And it was so great because I know I now live rent free in this bitch's head for the rest of her life. And I guess she lives in mine, but it's just a funny story to me because it tells on people and where they are in life. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm very out with my age because yeah. I want to show women, you don't have to succumb to societal norms and what they say you're supposed to be at a certain age, right? Right. You can do what you want. Yeah. You're free. You know, mm -hmm. we're not in shackles anymore. You know, the suffrages and all that, yeah. it's over. You know, it might be back soon if we're not, <laughs> if we're not careful. You know, hang on now, quick. But this, there was this table of women. This was in Nashville, Tennessee. And the crowd was fire. Like, oh, they were, oh, oh, I loved this crowd. They were so good. And I always, whenever I pick on people, it's always building them up. I never, even when there's a heckler, I never hurt them. Okay. I like to build them up as okay. I destroy them. Okay. Oh, uh, very interesting. Yeah. And, and I had, and it's crazy because it's so funny because I just do that because I never want to see, I never want to ruin somebody's comedy experience because I attack them because they weren't vibing with me. And then mm -hmm. they never go to a show again because okay. they see how comics are and they see it online on the TikTok or okay. the, the, uh, the comedian attacks and rips them to shreds and is abusive and throws them out. No, I don't want that. I don't want that experience because I still want them to enjoy comedy. Right. You know right. what I mean? Because okay. it's not about me. My ego is gone. Like I check that at the door because I just, I'm here for a good time. Okay. So there was this table of three women and I said, oh, look at sex in the city over here. Pretty ass bitches sitting over here. And the one lady, I called her the lady in the sage dress. And she was a little thicker. Uh -huh. And she had a low-cut sage cotton dress on. And she was grasping her purse like this. <laughs> what? Staring and not budging. And I'm like, how are you ladies? And I, I was like, you know, talking to them. She wouldn't say a fucking word. And then I was like, you know, I, I forget how it went. And, we're, and I was, you know, working with her. And she goes, I don't like you. And I said, oh, I go, don't worry, everybody. Everybody went, oh, like, like, what is her problem? And I said, no, Doug, and I'm gonna, don't worry about it. Her and I are going to be best friends by the end of the show. She goes, don't hold your breath. And I was like, oh, no, honey, we're going to be friends. I go, I go, before she said that, she goes, I don't like you. And I was like, 
oh no, I, I go, come on, I love, I go, you will. She's like, yeah. And she was being all mean. So I start singing to her. I'm like, I start serenading her, the Jennifer Hud, the Jennifer Holiday, and I am telling you. Oh. So I was like, and you, and you, and you, you're gonna love me. Yeah. And I'm screaming at the crowds going nuts because I'm like, I'm trying to right. make her fall right. in love with me. Like right. I want to be her friend. And she goes, don't hold your breath. And I said, okay, I won't. And I just kept going with the show. And I didn't address her anymore. I didn't put her down. I didn't want her. I was just trying to make her, right. I was trying to make her smile. Right. And that was what I was trying to do. I was just giving yeah. everything I had to make her crack a smile. Yeah. And usually it works. They lighten up and start laughing. Cause it's like they're realizing their the sticks a little tight up their ass. So at the end of the show, Apparently she complained to the owners of the venue about me, which is, I don't care because the crowd was like hugging me and taking yeah. photos and this one couple, and mind you, this was very elite musicians in Nashville that are at this show. This was the crowd. This was the it's venue. The South. Uh -huh. yeah. It was the South and this very high echelon in the music industry and his wife came up to me and said, I have never seen a comedian handle a heckler that was that nasty with such kindness and love oh, and positivity so sweet. like i've never seen anything yeah. like it and i said i would never hurt her because yeah. it's not her fault and it's yeah. not my fault i'm just being me and it's something i'm doing that's mirroring what she's not ready to deal with and it triggered her and it made her upset about something it was nothing it was just me being me i mm -hmm. wasn't you know she wanted nothing to do with me the whole fucking show. Mm -hmm. And um, so, but that was her thing. She was triggered. And I'm like, that wasn't me. That was all her shit. Cause she didn't want to have fun. Mm -hmm. So something was holding her back yeah. from letting loose or being happy. And it's like, yeah, you're stuck in that bubble. And that I have to stay to what other, I have to worry what other people what? think. And I can't, yeah. I, in my image and my, I have to be proper. No, you can't. Anyone who holds their handbag like this and yeah. And, you, I might say you might have had some off-color language. Perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> that might have shocked her. I don't know what she thought she was going to be seeing, but she didn't yeah. know who you were. Yeah. And the show was was labeled Naughty and Nice. Okay. And my friend Mark Riccadonna, okay. who we tour a lot together, he's my best friend. We call each other, I'm his comedy wife and he's my comedy Aww, husband. Cute. Yeah, and his wife, Ange, and his kid, I just, we're very close. And so um, when Ange, when we're on the road together, Ange goes, oh, you deal with him. Uh, and I'm like, you know, he's your husband while you're on the road. I'm like, I don't want him. Like, we joke, you know. But he's like my brother. And we do this um, naughty and nice show. And I, I, I wrote the tagline as, you know, come for some feel good dad jokes, funny stories of family and love. And, and I'm a piece of shit, you know, like Mark is full of dad jokes, feel good stories, sitcom, all that stuff. And I go, and I'm a piece of shit. And they start laughing. Like this is hilarious. Every venue goes, that is the funniest tagline because it's true. I just, I, and that's how I say things. I'm just kind of like to the point, like a five-year-old, like I'm a piece of shit. Like, let's just, Let's stop sugarcoating. Let's stop skating around. Let's just have fun. So I interrupted you. So no, that's that okay. Thought, no, no, no. What no. happened with the lady in the end? Let's she left. See. The karma. You had nice people talking to you. Really yeah, the karma people. was great. Everybody was everybody was surrounding me and yelling at her. Like, shut up, lady. Like they were all ganging up on her. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Leave her alone. She's fine. You know, leave her there. Let it... So that's resilience. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's you know. I mean, that would put somebody. Listen. People start, um, so I, I, have a, I have an unusual way that I work with people. Most people screen you mm -hmm. and they want to know who you are. I'm like the ER room, got no idea. When I pick up a Zoom or I do a call, I've got no idea who you are, right. what your program is. I got to fix you in 45 minutes or one hour. That's my goal. Right. right. So I don't know. And there are people that come in and go, okay, I came from an abusive relationship. It's really traumatic. And I hear this all the time. And then you hear something like he said something I didn't like. It just, it just depends. So everybody's got a different threshold. <laughs> Can you imagine somebody going, a, a, a kid that, like we were talking about before, going through your situation on stage? I mean, they'd be in uh, an they institution would, for years. They would either fold or usually what these kids do because they can't handle confrontation. Mm -hmm they'll attack mm. and somebody would have attacked her. You mm. fucking bitch, fuck mm -hmm. you, who the fuck? 
they would have attacked her mm. and punished her for yeah. not liking it. Yeah. You know, and it's so immature. It's very, you know, like it's 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 very unprofessional and it's very immature. And it's like you're you're taking this way too serious. You know, check your ego at the door. You ain't all that. You know, it's pretty interesting to create a whole bit around the heckler and uh -huh. be really good, like in yeah. improv, to do that right away. I'm, I'm really good on my feet with that. That's one of my gifts. So uh, I bet all comedians have to prepare themselves for that and right. get better at handling it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, they have to. That just means you just need to go on the road more. Yeah, yeah. You need to bomb more. <laughs> you know, you do. You need to bomb. And, and comics that don't bomb, oh, I never bomb on stage, then you're not trying anything. You're not yeah. taking a chance. You're not taking a risk. You're not pushing yourself to see what's inside. You're not peeling layers of you. Okay, so here's, here, okay, this is a little philosophical. I'm sorry. Love I, it, love it. Okay, so here's the disconnect for me. You have comedians who put themselves on the line, do the most terrifying thing, uh -huh. which is to stand up on stage, public speaking. It's considered one of the most terrifying things. Yes with the constant understanding that they can be rejected, mm -hmm. yet have a difficult time in emotional relationships. Yep. The same skill set on stage isn't transferable. Right. That's, you, because, you see where I'm going with that? Yeah, so because there's a fourth wall on stage. Oh. There's that fourth wall okay. in theater. You know, that fourth, oh. don't break the fourth wall. Like, okay, like, I, like, no, no, I you know. know and I so it. when you're on stage and the lights are on and you're it's you and a microphone, you don't see people as individuals. You just see a crowd of heads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And after the front row, everything starts to get blurry because of the shitty lighting and the. Oh, clock. you can't see because you it's can't like, see all, anything. Yeah. So we're yeah. like this, right? You know, or we'll walk into the audience to see who's out there. But so because you can't really see them clearly, they don't exist. Okay. You know, there's no emotional connection. They don't get to know, like they don't address people. Right. A lot of people can go up there and tell stories that they've recited in their head, yeah. which is a gift. I don't have that. My brain's too fucked up to write out word for word my act. You just do it? I write like... outlines. Okay. I do an outline. I do a premise yourself. and I do an outline about the premise. And I know the beginning, middle and end of the joke. It's like a story that happened. And so the rest of it, you're just in the moment. I'm in the moment and it's coming out. It'll come out the same. Yeah. The same story will come out, but it maybe sound a little different. Of course. Because it's a different crowd. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like um, there was one time, um, like in 2021, one of the shows I did with Andrew Dice Clay. Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> we were in, uh, at Soul Joel's in Pennsylvania and Joel's girlfriend sat in the front row both nights. And this is, you know, coming out, this is October of 21. So... We just, we, we had only been out like basically baseball season. We've been outside and not even at full capacity. Right. So, you know, from April till October, it's like baseball season. Yeah. So it's like, we still, you know, 33%, 50%. We started getting more and more by October, you know, masked up vaccination, you're vaccinated, you know, let's prevent the spread or whatever. So, you know, uh, so the first night, you know, the shows were earlier because things didn't stay open late yet because there was oh. nobody to work. Oh, okay. And okay. the demand wasn't there because people were still stuck at home. They were still into the home thing. Okay. And businesses couldn't stay open past six or seven because nobody wanted to work. Oh, Although either that. the workers, the, okay. you know, they either died or they moved out because they couldn't stay. Okay. So whatever, you know, it's all over the, it was all over the country like that. So the show, our first show was, um, let's say Friday night, the show was at seven o'clock which is early for Dice. Okay. So we were done by 8.30, 9 o'clock. Okay. We were done, out, on yeah. the, in the limo, going back going back to the hotel, you know? So um, he's like, this is so early. Then the Saturday night, we were at 6 o'clock. Oh, my gosh. That's and the sun's up, and it's October. And that's Dice, a different like, crowd. I said, we'll be out. I go, Dice, we'll be in the limo back to New, back to New York at 8 o'clock. Watch. He yeah. goes, so early i go yeah but we'll be back in the city by 11 30. yeah how great is that yeah he goes oh my god i love early shit like because he's so used to being out late yeah. we all are comics we're out late so the first night the crowd coming off work rowdy happy hour crowd right coming from work yes getting the happy hour drunk rowdy of course loud yeah. obnoxious out of control they were like children so i would go up to open and I would, in my spot is 15 minutes, 
20 if I want, but usually 15, and then I bring up dice. They were so out of control that I was trying to get them, and they were having fun. I mean, they weren't—they were out of control in a fun way. Let me let me yeah, put yeah. that up. They were very—they were fantastic. So I had to kind of spank them around and yeah, co yeah. corral the yeah, children, exactly, so they would be in a show mode and not loud and rowdy because he hates that uh -huh. because they interrupt yeah, him, yeah. and then he has to address them. And he just wants and he's working. You know, he loves his stuff. You know, he loves his craft, and. Um, so I did 25 that night. It was a long opening set. Like they were, they made me work. And they were, but they were fun. And so dice went up and they were still rowdy, but they, they were calm. Right. And as the alcohol kept pouring, they got rowdier. So usually he does an hour and 20. If he like, if he's, if he hates the crowd, he does an hour. If he loves them, he does an hour and 20 and mm -hmm. gives them the nursery rhymes. So they were shouting out nursery rhymes at like, 35 minutes in, 40 minutes in. And he's like, and he addressed the one lady in the front row, did his dice thing with the big fucking dits and this. And then somebody else in the back, he's all, didn't you hear me just shut her up? And they kept going. So this is about 40, 45 minutes in now. Now he's pissed. So he goes, fuck it. He just went into the nursery rhymes, did a few extras that he normally doesn't do and left at 50 minutes. And he was pissed. And I said, Andrew, he goes, I had so much more shit I wanted to do. And because we're comics, yeah. we want to do our show. Right, right. We want to get these jokes out, you know, because we work hard and we love our jokes. They're our children. And it's like, and he yelled at them. It was hilarious. I thought it was hysterical. And then he's like, I go, Dice, just think of it this way. 50 minutes or an hour and 20, you still got the same pay. And you made them very happy because they yeah. came to see the nursery rhyme. Yeah, you, yeah. you made them happy. You got paid. They're happy. Nobody's arguing. I know, I know, but I wanted to do all this new shit. And I said, I know, we'll do it tomorrow. So the next night we go on more subdued crowd. They didn't six have to work. Six o'clock. Yeah. They'd been at home. They weren't working all day. Mm -hmm. So they were home. They had a normal breakfast and lunch, yeah. did family yeah. shit, came to the show. It was sold out again. They were a different crowd. So I didn't have to beat them up as much. Yeah. And I had fun. So I only did about, I did about 18, 20. And they were flawless from beginning to end. I wanted to take them all home with me. Aww. And he went up, did his hour and 20, had a great time. And the owner's wife came up to me, or his girlfriend, and she came up to me after the show. And she goes, I watched you two nights in a row. I saw two completely different shows. Yes. That was amazing. And I said, well, it's the same material. Yeah. But the crowd takes me. I meet them. I like, it's like, I think of the crowd as a swimming pool. Like they're all in the swimming pool playing volleyball or yeah. whatever. And I just jump in the water and go, what's the game? What's happening guys? So I like to meet them halfway where they are so I can relate to them and connect with them. Because if I stay off and like, and ignore them or, or, or put them off or, or put them down for being rowdy or, but if I join them, then they're more receptive to what you have to say. And then they're going to go with you. And, and she goes, that was, I show, I've never seen it. So I've watched thousands of comics come through this club. I've never seen it's anybody true. handle that like that. And I said, well, I like to meet people. How I, I, I just like them to have fun. I go, I know my material inside out and backwards. So it doesn't matter where yeah. I'm at. I'm going to, yeah, yeah. I know how to weave it in. So I just had, they just, they took me on a crazy ride last night and on a fun ride tonight. It was just, you know, the crowd dictates where we're going. I, I really respect that because that's one keen observation of human nature mm -hmm. to the ability to discreetly and unknowingly to the audience manage them and corral them, you know, like a trail boss. I got a little cows left over there, you know, right? <laughs> I mean, you're doing all that while your mind is on the time, mm -hmm. while your mind is thinking about him. That is such a great skill. And it's, you can't really teach that to people. No. That is human nature. That's innate. That's, that's in who you are. When I go to shows, even here in the city, I go there on time. Mm -hmm. Whether I'm on, no matter where I'm on the lineup, even if I'm closing the show, I go right at the start of the show because I like to see the MC work, get to know the crowd, warm them up, yeah. see how they are, yeah. and then watch what they react to, yeah, yeah. vibe out the audience. I just kind of vibe and let my instincts take mm -hmm. over, trust my gut, feel them out. And I go, okay, I want to do, and then I'll have a set list in my head. And then when I go up, it changes because something yeah. will happen yeah. or somebody will say something funny or the comic performing will bomb or they'll be great or whatever. It doesn't matter, but it's, I just have 
this Rolodex in my head or this file cabinet mm-hmm. of all my material. So when I'm up there, I'm like, oh, hi, let me pull this joke out. Oh, oh, you, you want to talk about that? Okay, let me get this joke. You know, it's, I just kind of let it dictate itself. Yes, it, it's beautiful. I mean, imagine if somebody, you know, that's kind of the skill that we try to teach people, stuff people in my business to, to teach somebody to, on the fly, know how to handle somebody, know how to handle a situation, know how to feel it out, like communication, okay? Yes. You know, it's so boring. It's like, oh, why do couples stay together? Because they can communicate. I mean, it's a horrible, not sexy topic, but it is so essential. And the way you communicate Mm -hmm. with an individual has to be the same thing you do Mm -hmm. innately. Attuned to how do they think? What words will they understand? How do I speak their language? Yep. Because if I just speak my language, I'm like that boring professor that wants to show you how intelligent they are, but they couldn't care less whether you learn, as opposed to the person that has an assessment of who you are, how it's going to land. It's the same process. Yeah. And I would tell people, get out of your head. Get the fuck out of your head and trust your gut. How do, okay, so how would... That might sound like a really cool idea, but how would somebody know how to do that? I don't know. Ah! I'm <laughs> we'll not be right sure back. Know either. <laughs> I always tell people, "What is your first? I, this, they teach you this in improv. I always tell okay. people, "Take an improv class. You yeah, want to oh, learn how great. to think on your feet. Take yep. an improv class." Because everybody in improv has, "Oh, I'm going to do this funny joke, and I'm going to keep it right here, and I'm going to say the funny thing." And then something happens, and you have to yes and everything. Now your joke's gone because you didn't get it out yeah. there. So whatever's happening, you just have to react Mm -hmm. and get out of your head and just feel like, okay, what is the first thing that comes to your head when you see the word chair? You know, boom, whatever. Don't think, just say the first thing out of your mouth. Doesn't even have to make sense. Right. But it's also an, uh, that's a, that's a, uh, an activity or an exercise to practice getting out of your head and just saying the first thing that comes to mind. Wow. And, and you'll be surprised how accurate or how funny that is compared to the thing you thought of in your head five minutes before. Yeah, because it's not in alignment. One is happening right. in real time, the other is prepared. Yes. yes. Yeah. You know, we have prepared material. Yeah, of course. But And we're prepared to go on stage, but a lot of comics are so here and they just recite off of a teleprompter in their head. So if there's some crowd work, they don't know how to handle it. Wow. And they shy away from it. And, yeah. And they freak out. For me, I enjoy the hecklers. I was like, you know, my act is very loud, as as everyone knows. I'm loud. I'm a, a boy, you know, boisterous. I, I I I weave the crowd in and out of my bits, like yeah, make yeah. it a personal show. That's yeah. just how I operate. I like to do that because I like to connect to people, and you know, so being like that, I actually, you know, I don't hate hecklers. I don't say don't heckle the comic. No, you can talk to me because my act makes you want to talk right it's like black church oh yeah jesus tell it honey yes lord yes lord yes honey you know because they're and and i love that yeah. i love when you feel it or you're so into it you want to talk because yeah. it's it's a it's not a a, a a carefully thought out so you're saying they thing. feel free enough yes okay so you have had the skill and the ability to go in there and allow them to feel yeah. free yeah that's big uh, have you you've never broken it down before have no, you no. <laughs> i just do it just because i want to have fun and yeah, i want yeah, yeah. them to have fun with me like yeah. you're all my new friends let's have fun let's talk some mad shit yeah. and have a good time yeah 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 that's very interesting and even like um if someone doesn't like me and i i just tell them i love them you know like yeah. oh i'll see you at home i love you see you at home keep the bed warm or whatever something stupid you know something hacky and stupid like, I'll see you in the car. I'll be there in a minute. Pop the trunk. I'll be there in a minute. You know? <laughs> you know? <laughs> That's a new dating conversation. Yeah. Pop the you trunk. Know. That's a new dating show. Pop the trunk. <laughs> we should write it. Yeah, I love you. <laughs> oh, um, you're, oh, you're leaving me? I love you. <laughs> um, I we're, We have to wrap up. This okay. is towards the end of the show. Normally... For my comedians that are on this show. I know, you make jokes and stuff, yeah, right? No, I have two questions. It's oh. the two question segment. Okay. It's time for two questions. So oh, 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 they're no. usually prepared. I, I, know I know. Usually advance. they're prepared for it. And I was like, she's not going to have an answer for this. Okay. But maybe okay. you will. It'll be okay. fun. Okay. Well, the first question is, you know, is there a joke a comic has written that made you go, God damn, that was brilliant. I wish I had written that. And what was it? You're not a comic. So what do you, so is there, oh, God, so is there, say this. okay. Uh, Chris Rock with the old pussy versus new pussy. Yes. 
I mean, all I think he's one of the greatest relationship he's, experts he's, ever. Chris he's, Rock is amazing. He says what everybody's thinking, and they don't dare say. I yep. loved him. Yeah, he's I loved great. Him. Oh, so I'm glad I asked that question. <laughs> so, I love that. And then the second question I always ask, because we're comics, and we're you know we love to sit in the green room and crack jokes, try to make each other laugh on the stupidest shit. So, and also because I opened for Paul Mooney for many years. Paul would close his show with street jokes or dad jokes. You know, we call them street jokes or they're called dad jokes. Um, but he would mooneyize them. He'd have a, a Paul Mooney twist to him and make them and destroy the house. Like he'd crush the house. What's a street joke, daddy joke? Like a street dad, like a dad joke. Like, um, uh, what's a, like, a uh, like a, uh, here's one of my favorites. I'll do my favorite. A rabbi and a priest are sitting on a bench in Central Park. And right as they look up, this 12-year-old kid goes by on a skateboard. And uh, the priest looks at the rabbi and goes, man, I'd sure like to fuck him. And the rabbi goes, out of what? <laughs> okay. It's okay. street jokes like that. Okay. Do you have a favorite? No, I don't think I've ever heard. Or I don't think I, I haven't had dads talk to me and tell me that stuff. I, I don't know. No, there's a lot like, of those so-and-so walks into yeah, the bar and yeah. they go on forever. Yeah. They're, they're amazing. They're so funny because they're so corny. We love dad jokes. They're street. We call them street jokes. I, I don't. I don't know that I can think of. Oh, I, and a street I know. joke is just a joke you've heard on the internet or a joke oh, that I your know. uncle would tell at the okay. dinner table. Okay, so yes, I remember there was a joke that was told. Not, I'm not going to remember it properly because I might have been six or seven, but it it's was something only three where weeks ago. Oh, no. <laughs> I love you. I love you. I too. love you. I'll put the boot to your shirt. Um, what, uh, it's like a lady goes to a doctor and she's got a banana in her ear and she says she's having trouble hearing. And he says, Well, you've got a banana in your ear. And I, it was something like that, but I don't remember the ending. Uh, so uh, that, that's a. Th I, I wish would I make had crickets chirping okay. right now. <laughs> I, 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 I don't think I'm going to have a career in stand-up. Okay, so, but it was, it was something like, yeah, it was something like that. Right, okay. That's silly. All right, yeah, those are silly. Or knock, knock, who's there? Yeah, yeah exactly. Orange, orange who? Orange, you glad I didn't say banana? You know? Okay. You know, corny jokes, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. You know, that's a dad joke. joke. Okay, yeah. street joke. Okay, now I'm much more informed. There we go. There you go. Well, I'm so excited, Susan Winter. Thank I you, love honey. you. We've been friends for, God, since I moved here. Ooh. 2005. Maybe, oh, close. Get close years. to 20 years. Yeah. That's how long we've been friends. Yeah. And she has an aged a bit, and I'm going to kill her after the show. So when the camera cuts off and you find I'll out there's a the body. I'll be the of the trunk. Yeah, she'll I'll be, be stuck. Pop the trunk. Pop the trunk for me, please. <laughs> I love you. Tell everybody your website, where they can oh. find you on social media. SusanWinter.net. I've got a YouTube channel. Come look at me up. It's just Susan Winter. If you Google Susan Winter, hopefully I'm number one. I don't know how that happens. I think I'm an obsessive workaholic. I don't pay for it. Instagram, Facebook, but check out the YouTube videos because they're really good and instructional. If you have a dating thing and you don't know what's going on, I can answer most all of those. You don't even need to hire me. It's just in the videos. So that'll help. Listen, we're all fucked up. We all need Susan. Everybody needs everybody needs a little winter in oh, their thank life. You. Yes. <laughs> and also don't forget you can follow us too on Instagram at old school new school comedy. You can follow me everywhere at Christy Miller Comedy. And uh, if you hated me, I've been Kathy Griffin. And uh, <laughs> but seriously, please like the show, subscribe to us, follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, and don't forget to share the show. We love you. See you next week.